Hello everyone, and this time we're looking at embryology, specifically human embryology. And this is an example of how organisms grow, and our own species is one of the more complex organisms on the planet, so it's a good example to look at. So the first stage is that gametes join in fertilization, and we looked at how gametes were produced last time in a process sometimes called gametogenesis, and this is achieved by cell what? Hmm. Well, human gametes come in two kinds, and something which is from the female and uh, from the male. So when these two come together, they begin the process of fertilization. So let's have a look at what those blanks are, shall we? So we saw that gametes are produced by cell division, or if you were thinking more specifically, cell meiosis. And human gametes, of course, come in two kinds, which you may know are an egg from the female and a sperm from the male. These are the two gametes that come together in fertilization. So here they are, the sperm and the egg. And you can see the sperm is very small compared to the egg, but still carries 23 chromosomes, a haploid nucleus ready for fertilization. So what is fertilization? Well, fertilization is a process that creates a new organism. And there are four basic stages. Arrival, when the sperm and the egg are introduced. Entry, when the sperm enters the egg cell and this prevents other sperm from entering. And that is part of the activation when the egg begins to produce proteins that will start the creation of a new organism. And then finally, fusion, when the genetic information from the egg and the sperm combine in the nucleus of the egg. And so after fertilization happens, the two gametes have joined into one cell. And this one cell with a combined genetic information of two gametes is called a zygote. So, number one, arrival. The sperm arrive in the female reproductive system, a part which is not under the remit of this course, and then they become more active, and they call this capacitation. And chemical changes in the sperm allow them to swim faster and connect better to the membrane of the egg when they get there. So stage two is sperm entry. When they arrive at the egg, and only one sperm is able to enter the egg and break through into the egg's nucleus. A change in the chemistry makes a second sperm very unlikely to enter the egg. Under very strange conditions this can happen, but it is very, very unlikely. Stage 3 is the activation of the egg, when the sperm makes chemical changes begin to happen in the cell and in particular calcium coming into the cell which makes it more difficult for sperm to enter. So there is the fusion of a human sperm and egg and that is the process when the nucleus is absorbed into the egg nucleus and it is similar to cell division when microtubes fibers connect to the sperm and pull it inside. So around four hours after the fusion occurs the process of DNA synthesis begins and a new organism starts. So we start with the process of cleavage when mitosis occurs very very quickly uh, without any particular cell growth the zygote divides until a ball of cells, a solid 8 to 32 cell lump called a morula is formed. After this, the cells continue to divide and the morula hollows out inside, so you now have a blastula. And in mammals, this stage is sometimes called a blastocyst. So at this stage, all of the cells can become any cell in the body. They are stem cells, is what we call them, embryonic stem cells particularly, which are the most 
versatile of all and you'll see that word there pluripotent so potent is a word to talk about having an ability or a strength and pluri is like plural you know, so multiple somethings is pluri something so pluripotent simply means that these cells have many strengths. Next we have the process of gastrulation. So at the end of cleavage cells start to move around pulled by proteins and that is really how all of this works. Amino acids and proteins are assembled together and then they fold around to pull cells into certain shapes and in the process of gastrulation the blastula starts to fold in and the cells arrange themselves into three layers so you have the endoderm which is the inside the part that folded in you have the ectoderm which is the part that is on the outside of the cell and does not fold in and then the mesoderm which is the part in between those two which is not on the outside or the inside but between so we now have a gastrula and the opening at one end of the gastrula in mammals at least will one day become the animal's anus which means that yes you did indeed begin as a butthole and that space inside the gastrula is the beginning of the intestinal tract that is one day where the mouth and the stomach and all of the rest of the intestinal parts will be so at this stage we now go to neurulation and if you know what doctors called neurologists are you will already know what this is about inside the gastrula we now send information from the DNA to make many types of non-stem cells and one of the first things that needs to develop is the animal's nervous system. So organogenesis is the development of organs and those systems and as we said the nervous system is the first one to form. A small part of the ectoderm folds in and creates a neural tube which is the beginning of the brain and spinal cord. So at this stage, the embryo is called a neurula. So the embryo is something we can call any stage of a organism in development. But the neurula is this special stage at the beginning of the nervous system formation. So processes similar to this will create all of the creature's organs and body parts and they are always guided by DNA sending instructions to proteins to fold in certain ways to create certain structures. So the gestation period and the gestation period is what we call the time from fertilization to birth while an animal is still inside its mother. Uh, this lasts around 266 days in humans, which is otherwise called nine months. And below you can see the formation of the fetus. So at around four weeks, the embryo is very small, only around two centimeters long and you can just about see it looks a bit like a fish but there is some kind of creature there moving on to around 10 weeks and the embryo is now around eight centimeters long and it's now called a fetus rather than an embryo as it has now taken most of the main characteristics of the creature it will become and you can see that looks very very strange but at least a little bit human. At 18 weeks the fetus's brain cells begin to join together and the nervous system starts to develop very strongly. This is when the fetus is around 20 centimeters long and then finally just before birth at 38 weeks the fetus is about 30 centimeters long and is ready to be born although there are many parts that have not finished developing and human babies continue to develop for several years after birth.